Hello everybody. So I'm making like three videos in a row right now because this, um, I just made my, um, top five Wednesday video just a few minutes ago because I was having trouble coming up with books last night. And finally I came up with, I finally was able to come up with some. So, so now I'm making another video that is basically the, um, the comp the coffee book tag um i will look i don't know who the original tag tag maker is but i will look that i will look that person up when i'm done making this video and i will post it on my video when i publish it okay so um so the book coffee tag is basically you know like all the other tags it's a series of questions and um books that represent um types of coffee essentially okay so here goes okay so black coffee a book that's hard to get into oh I did not answer this question yet a book that's hard to get into but has a large fan base okay um I don't I guess the only oh uh, I was I was not gonna say I didn't want to say this one because I did get into the books but I guess in a way you could say Game of Thrones or Song of Ice and Fire. That's what the books are called. The book series is called, but the show is called Game of Thrones. Because, But I know a lot of people have a hard time reading that book because it's so long and so thick. Um, and there's so many characters. And there's so much information. But there are a lot of people. And I mean, even I have trouble recalling some stuff. But my funny thing is my parents usually ask me. At least about the names and stuff because they watch the show too but they're you know they don't they have trouble remembering character names so they have to ask me questions and the only way I get some of the information I know about like some of the background info information all the little secrets and stuff and the theories is through the internet like I look up stuff and you know I watch there's this one show that's kind of like a behind the scenes type show where they discuss after each episode which I do not remember what that what it's called um but you can watch it on YouTube and they also have it for other shows but again I don't remember what they're called so I guess the only thing I can come up with is Game of Thrones or Song of Ice and Fire for that question okay Peppermint Mocha a book series that gets popular during the holidays I know everybody says this I'm sorry but I'm going to say it again, and you know, I know there's a rule on people, there's an unspoken rule that people try to avoid mentioning this book series because it's so popular, and you can answer, use this book series as the answer to a lot of questions on these tags. But, I mean, it's a series I know really, it's a series I know best. I mean, it was one of my childhood reads, and it's the one that got me into fantasy. So, and I remember it really, I mean, I don't remember it 100%, but I remember like 50% essentially so um and I'm gonna eventually reread this series but it is true that this book series gets popular around the holidays and that is Harry Potter because I guess because people like because it really you know it's a Christmassy type it reminds you a little bit of Christmas because a lot of the book takes place in the winter time winter and fall time and they really do Christmas up <laughs> in that world at in at Hogwarts so yes, I'm going to mention Harry Potter. Okay, favorite childhood hot chocolate. Favorite childhood read. Now I'm not sure if that was a question or if it was something like favorite child favorite kids book that you like. But um I'm I don't normally I'm just starting to get into rereading kids' books. Like I'm reading a series of unfortunate events right now. Um, although I'm taking a break from it for a little, for a few weeks, but, um, like I just finished reading The Miserable Mill, which I think is book four, um, so, but I will come back to it, but right now I checked out, I, um, reading, right now I checked, I borrowed from the library the Agatha Christie book, and I, because at the moment I'm going, um, so, well, anyway, I'm taking a break, um, from that series, but, the childhood read, I, th the first one that came to my mind and is like one of my favorites is The Velveteen Rabbit. I love that book. I love, I love the illustrations in my edition. They're so beautiful. And I don't know if I still have that edition, ed edition. I don't know where it is. Maybe it's a 
box away, but hopefully we didn't get rid of it. Or maybe it's on the shelf downstairs in our den down there. That's where we used to keep it in our old house before we moved. We kept it in the den, so it might still be there. Or it might be in one of the boxes that still has not been taken out of storage. Um, well, actually, it was taken out of storage, but my parents have not put any of that stuff away because so much is going on. So we haven't gone around. I don't think my parents got around to unloading the um, thing with all the all the stuff we took out of storage. But we had to take it out because um, we were, or we would have, my parents would have to pay another month. So they had to take it out quickly by the end of this month. So, or the end of last month, I think. End of May, so they took it, so, but they haven't put anything back, so it might be in one of those boxes, I don't know. But that, anyway, that's neither here nor there. It is one of, The Balbatine Rabbit was one of my favorite childhood reads. Like I said, I love the illustrations in that edition, and it's so beautiful, and Kate, like, and in case you don't know, it's basically a story about this, like, this boy, this little boy gets this, little velvet rabbit, velveteen rabbit, and the rabbit one day asks, you know, the toys will come alive at night, and or when the boy's not in his room there, and so the rabbit asks this toy rocking horse, how does he be, he wants, you know, starts learning about, asking him about becoming real, and wants to, and he realizes he wants to be real, and the horse says, you know, the only way you'll become real is if your owner loves you enough that then loves you so much, then you will, uh, the magic will make you real. But at first, the boy does not really, you know, it's just another one of his toys. He doesn't really care about the rabbit as much. And then one day, the boy gets sick. Gets re really, really sick. And this was a long time ago, so I think this book, I think it was, I think the saying in this book was a long time ago. So it was more easily, you could get sick more easily, I think. It's been a long time since I read the book. And the parents, in the, the, the woman, the caretaker of the little boy, the, like, little nursemaid, or the nursemaid just decides, you know, there's a little rabbit, gives the boy the, the rabbit, because he doesn't have, he wants a toy to, you know, comfort him and stuff. And he ends up getting really attached to the rabbit, he takes the rabbit everywhere, and of course, I'm sure you can guess what happens next, that the rabbit is loved enough that the rabbit becomes real. So, it's one of my favorite, it's a beautiful story, it's one of my favorites, and it is actually a story that I wanted to get for my nephew, um, but we couldn't get a nice edition for him because he's only like, he will be two next month, so it, it's hard to, you know, of course, so it's very hard to get him, get little, little kid, little toddlers, those nicer books, because they're just going to tear them apart, so I had to get him a little, I don't know if I got for him or his other family, you know, his other aunt and you know, grandparents got it for him, but he got a hardback edition of it. You know, one of those harder books, the smaller ones that you give little kids, um, little toddlers. But I had been wanting to get him that book, and he did get, he, and like I said, he ended up getting it. I don't know if he's read it, though. I don't know. Because, I mean, the kid doesn't, <laughs> my nephew is, of course, he's just a little, little baby, so of course he's not going to be, appreciate how beautiful that book is until he's a little bit older. Okay, so that's my favorite childhood read. Um, Double Shot Espresso. I think that's what it was. Double Shot Espresso. Um, a book that kept you at the edge of your seat the whole time. I tried to, I've been trying to avoid saying, mentioning the series, but I couldn't help it. Um, but Akamath, the second book in the Akamath series. That kept, I kept having to read that book. I was trying to savor the book and take my time with reading it, but I just kept having to read the next chapter and then the next chapter. And it, you know, kept me very anxious and I was very nervous for Freya and especially with Tamlin and how, you know, how controlling he kind of is. Um, well, not kind of, he is controlling. And, but, and it was so exciting, and basically this book leads up to the war that happens in Akka War. But it was, I just, I kept having to read, and it was just, I basically, like I said, it was a book that kept me up all night, and when I was getting closer to the end, I had, I couldn't fall asleep because the book was still on my mind. Because I try to go to bed at the same time every night, or at least start to go, start to go to bed, like start to fall asleep. But I couldn't sleep because the book was on my mind and I was obsessing over it. 
and this happened after I finished the book too because I was obsessing over getting the next, the third book because it ended on a cliffhanger. Um, so I, ha I, I just kept, so eventually I got up, turned on my lamp, and just started to continue reading the book until I was done. So I am, that book, so it was technically the second, it was technically May 2nd when I finished, because I didn't read that book until April. Um, because I was kind of waiting. I was kind of, I didn't want to read it right away, because whenever I get a new book, I try to not read it right away, because I want to appreciate it while it's here on my shelf. So, um, finally I read it in April because Aqua War was coming out, so I, so I read it and I finished it technically on May 2nd because it was like 1 or 2 in the morning when I finally, when I finished it. Or maybe 3. I don't remember. Um, and then the next day I was, because my mom and my grandma were running errands, I was able to tag along and they were able to drop me off at the bookstore at Books A Million, so I was able to get war and there were two there were two editions left and it was in the afternoon early afternoon I believe so luckily I was able to get one of the editions and it was the edition with the pretty pictures in it not a signed edition which would be totally cool but I did not get a signed I think that sign those signed editions are only sold were only sold at certain certain stores like maybe Target and our the closest Target to us is in like the next little city in this county you know or not the next one but the, you know but anyway, it would it would it was a long, it would be a long drive. Okay, so Akamas is the one that kept me up. Okay, um, next Starbucks, a book that you see everywhere. Now I would say again, Akor because I've been seeing that a lot, or Harry Potter. But I will, I'm trying to not. Although I do mention the Akatar series again, but in this series of questions, but I decided to pick something different for this question, for star the Starbucks question. And I picked Fifty Shades of Grey, the whole the Fifty Shades of Grey series. I see that every bookstore I go to, except for I don't know if it's at. Actually, I think I did see it at the used bookstore in our town. I think it's I saw it there too, but I see that book everywhere. Especially since Fifty Shades Darker just came out, the the um the movie just came out, so it's like everywhere and. It's not now. That's not a book I'm interested in reading. So, but I do see it a lot. It's a series that I do see a lot. Of course, but of course, I don't like seeing it a lot. But it is a, it is like Starbucks, and you see it everywhere. Okay. Um. Okay. I don't even know if I got number six. Sorry. I don't. Well. I'll, okay. I will. I will write these down in the con I will write down these questions on my video. But um Okay, so I think that this was number six was that hits you your coffee shot. I, I do not know what the I do not understand what this question was. Um but basically give a shout out to an indie author. I don't know who are the indie authors of the book world. But, I mean, a lot of times I admit, I do read the books that are popular. I mean, they're popular for a reason. And I know there are people that don't like the books that are pumped. Some of the books that are popular, like, there's not, not everybody loves Sarah J. Mass. Um, not everybody, some people only love one of her series. And not everybody loves, like, Maggie Steve either, or, you know, or, like, George R. R. Martin, or, you know. But they're, they're still popular. They're popular for a reason. But, um, so... But basically, I don't know who the indie who, but I did, I chose some, an author that you don't hear a lot, that I haven't heard a lot about on BookTube, but I've seen her books, you know, I've seen, um, in the background of some of pe some people's videos, I have seen her books on people's shelves, but people don't talk about her a lot, and that is Kate Morton. I, she's one of my favorite historical fiction authors, um, she writes... Really good, really beautiful historical mystery thriller, some mystery stories that you know. A lot of times they go back and forth between the present and the past. Um, she and her writing style is great. I love her writing style. I love how it still has the feel of historical fiction, but it's very, it's also very modern, easy to read. It's not like reading, you know, one of the classics like Jane Austen or one of the or a novel by one of the Bronte sisters. It's easy to read. I mean, she's easy to read, and 
it's very it's very beautiful and she's good at the script she's great at descriptions and I just I love I just love her stories um I keep checking her website to see when the next book is coming when her next book is coming I don't know if she has any books coming out anytime soon hopefully she will and she's an author I would love to meet because I just um and I think my favorite of hers is the first book of hers that I read, which is The Forgotten Garden, which, um, is, um, it's, it's, it's a very beautiful story about a young girl finding out who her, her parents are, who her birth family is, and inheriting this garden, and then, um, in this fairy tale book, and like I said, it goes back and forth between the, the, um, the present and the past and we learn about the woman the girl as an adult and then we we see her grant we learn we meet her granddaughter who begins to learn more about her her grandmother's past and everything and it's one like i said it's my fa i think it's my favorite one so i don't know if she's an indie author but she's an author i feel like i don't hear a lot about on booktube okay Decaf, a book you expected more from. Now, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to come up with an answer for this one because, to me, every book, I'm very, I'm always satisfied with the books I read. I mean, there are some things that I don't like that the author does in those books, and there are some books that I'm not, like, as into as other people, but it doesn't mean that they disappoint me or I expected more from them. Um, it's just, you know, I'm not, like, in love with the book or you know it's but I did pick one book that I was a little the one the one of the rare occasions where I was disappointed that I remember anyway was a book I read earlier this year I think it was this year or it might have been last year no I think it was this year it is Red, Ry Red Rain by R.L. Stein. now R.L. Stein was a great middle grade horror author I loved the Goosebumps books the series the books the TV show it was great, and I even thought the movie was kind of, the movie was fun, that movie that they made starring Jack Black, I thought that was a really fun movie, and I loved how they brought out all the old, all the classic characters, and like, you got to meet, you got to see Slappy, who, I think he was also voiced by Jack Black, and, you know, you got to meet that giant, you know, the giant in bug book, which I did not rem I don't think I read that one, the invisible boy, the, you know, a lot of the all a lot of the classic characters that Arnold Stein created, classic villain horror villains that Arnold Stein created. So I was hoping, I was thinking, oh, the, you know, I'm I was like, I was in a bookstore with my friend, and she showed me the book and everything. She was like, well, would you like me to buy this for you? She was being very generous, and I was like, oh yeah, that sounds like my kind of book I would like, and it's by Arnold Stein, you know, and like most people from the nineties. I grew up with R.L. Stein, so I figured, oh, this will be good, you know, and it'll be cool, and I'm very interested to see his step into the adult horror world, you know, but I was a little bit disappointed with it. Now, of course, I'm also, I gave him the benefit, I probably gave him more stars than he deserved on Goodreads, because, you know, I was willing to give the, the R.L. Stein a benefit of the doubt, because it, I think it was his first one. And it's like a st it's hard to transition from like adult writing to kid writing, or I mean from kid writing to adult writing because adult writing is you know kid writing is a little bit easier and more simplistic than adult writing, and adults are more critical. So, but I am it. I was disappointed with the book. It was kind of predictable. It felt like I was watching like an old cheesy Lifetime horror film. And the kid, and I agree that the two little boys, the little evil boys, were kind of annoying. I mean, although I kept reading because I wanted to find out what happens. And I was, you know, I was trying to see if they would stop the bad guys and everything. And, um, and it just, it was very cheesy and it was just, it wasn't, it was a little too predictable. And I didn't, and... Um, the same, especially with the ending. The ending, you know, you could you could see that coming. But I mean, like I said, I kept I kept reading it because I just I kind of wanted to see what happens and maybe the Arlstein would surprise us. But 
it was just, it was, eh. So, I mean, like I said, I gave it three stars. I probably gave it more stars than it deserved. Um, and that was just, I expected more from that and I didn't get it. Okay, so the last question. The perfect blend. A book that was bittersweet and satisfying. Now, I don't know about this, um, bittersweet, but necessarily, but it was a very satisfying book, was the Akatar series. Right now, that series is currently the series that I'm obsessed with. I mean, I have recently, I did read the Grisha series, which was great. But I'm not as obsessed with the Grisha series, the Grisha trilogy, as I am with this series. This is great. It had magic and it had romance and it had some sexy times and great characters. Um, and there was twists and turns and and it was just, I mean, I know it didn't have as much diversity as people would like, but I don't, you know, that doesn't bother me as it bothers some people, but I, of course I understand the importance of having diversity of books. Especially considering that I am not completely white. I am an Asian. I am of. I have a little bit of Asian in me. So I definitely. And I also have disabilities and whatnot. So I definitely agree with the idea of having more diversity in books. But that didn't. Like I said, that does. I still enjoy Sarah J. Mass's books. And, you know, I mean. And there are some things I'm not always happy with with their books. But I still am and very entertained by them and I have so much fun with them. And like I said, the Akatar series is my favorite. And I, li I also really like fairies. And I like how she did a different interpretation of fairies, you know. Um, and I liked the character, the char like I said, I love the characters, like Freya. And um, the only character I wasn't that crazy about was Tamlin. I mean, I liked Tamlin in the beginning, but I wasn't, like, in love with Tamlin. I thought, oh, he's, he's a good character, you know, but it's like, eh. And then, of course, he starts to... The change, you start to see his true colors in Akamath. And there was even a little bit, there was even a little bit of that in Akatar. It's just, I feel like some people didn't see that, including myself. But anyway, this is not, I don't want to get into an Akatar gush. I'm just going to say that to me, the Akatar series was a, um, like I said, a perfect blend for, um, and very satisfying. Of course, eventually that might the answer to that question might change. If I ever did this this tag again, I'm sure the answer to that question would be a different answer. I would have a new series to obsess over. But right now it's the Akatar series. And I'm definitely gonna reread it. And maybe I'll and maybe I'll reread the A Court of Thorns and Roses, the actual book, the the book itself, not the not, I mean I will read the whole series, but I'm all right. Um, I'm a little conflicted because I don't like Tamlin and I hate him and I don't know if I want to reread a book where it's all about Tam, where it's about Tamlin and her relationship with Tamlin, how she loves him and everything at the time. But I might reread it just for the sake of, you know, because it's part of the series. And I might, and also to see if I can note, if I can find other, because the only thing I noticed that might have been seen, get the controlling vibes from him was the part of the series when he was like, when he, he was doing that special ritual thing where he went on full on Fae and he was warning Freya to stay out of, out of the, to not come out during this because she couldn't be part of this because she was a human. And if he caught her scent, well, he might go after her. Unfortunately, if she does go outside and even though Lucian and I think Rhysand shows up too, and this is the first time we meet Rhysand, they both kind of get, well, you know, get her to go back inside, but she doesn't make it in time, and Tamlin catches her. And then I feel like he kind of blamed her for it. Like, it was all her fault. And yes, yeah, she shouldn't have been going out there in the first place. But at the same, you know, but at the same time, I feel like it's more his fault and his, rea and his reaction to that. I did not like that. And I'm sure there are a few Tamlin people that still like Tamlin that will argue that Freya should have listened and it is her fault. But I, I think that would, but to me that's a little, but anyway. Okay, so I'm not going to, again, I'm going to try to, I don't want to get into any more discussion because I don't want this video to get too long. But like I said, that is the answer to my last question. A perfect blend, the Akatar series. 
Okay, so I will post thank you, um I will post the link if I can find it of the original tag creator. And um I hope you guys enjoyed my answers for the coffee tag. Right, thank you.